A few things have come up since my director's report. Um, I was hoping that the trustees would be willing to vote the old printer and the, there's the old hard drive from four years ago that was the director's computer that died and downstairs in the basement there's a box marked computer. I was hoping the trustees would be willing to vote those as surplus and unsellable and Valley Recycling in Northampton said they would take them and it would be about $25. Okay, can some, someone-, someone and That way we can get them out of the cellar. I vote that we call them surplus equipment. Okay, so you're moving that we call that, what Cindy just said, surplus equipment. Is there a second? I second. Can I just ask a question about it real quick? Yep, there, absolutely. It's sort of sensitive, like we don't need to like worry about pulling the hard drive or anything, right? There's nothing sensitive on there that we need to be concerned about? No. Okay. Um, the I, one, the hard drive that was the director's hard drive. Um, when I was out on maternity leave, it basically died, and the ink and toner solutions scrubbed everything off of it that they had to, and then for some reason it came back here to us. Um, so it's just been sitting, taking up space, and collecting dust. I will okay. second that motion then. All right. Is there any further discussion? about naming that surplus. Okay, then roll call vote, Jim. I agree. I agree. Sheila. Accepted. Megan. Accepted. Cynthia. Accept. Okay, then uh, well, motions. Cindy, how are, you, how are you getting the computers to the Valley Recycling? That is where Rebecca knows where it is. So Rebecca is willing to take oh, that. Good, fine. Thank Great. you both. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> yes, okay. thank you. That gets some stuff out of our, our cellar. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then um, there's some of the wooden chairs downstairs that were downstairs in the community room have received about two inches of water mold damage um, from oh. being downstairs when the flood occurred. Are they, they can the be... Go Not ahead, really. Five of them we weren't using anyways. So I don't know. Do we want to just hold off for now and then see how things progress? Anyone? They're moldy and gross. I don't see a <laughs> point in keeping them, right? Mm -hmm. I, I moved them and I, I don't know that I saw mold. I did see water damage. And also I just want to clarify, these are all children's chairs. They aren't, I don't believe. Oh, okay. Andy, were there adult chairs as well? No, it's mostly the children's chairs. These are like vintage children's wooden chairs of a variety of sizes. So it's not as though it's one single set. It's different styles, different sizes for different ages. Okay. Um, I, I don't know that they're unusable. Um, I, wood typically does eventually dry out. It's really a mat. Part of it is they're heavy, so they're not easy yeah. to move around. And, um, and now they're, you know, they have this slight damage is what I noted and reported to Cindy. And reported. Could, could we just recycle them by putting them out on the portico and just say free on it and let someone take them and use them for some other reason? It's a shame to try to just throw them away. I don't have a problem with that as long as it's been voted that that's what the board decided to do with that. Yeah. You want to try that and if they don't go, then we'll bring them down to the transfer station. Okay. Would that so be okay? Once, yeah, I think once again, we have to declare them surplus in order to give them away. So can someone move that? We're doing I, a lot of surplusing tonight. Yeah, Sheila, I know. Move. I move that motion that we... Is there, a second? Yeah. Is there a second? I second that. Okay, yeah. any discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Jim? Yes. Sheila? Yes. Megan? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So those can be put out 
um, and marked for free. Maybe someone um, will put them to a good use. Works for me. Okay, and then um, tomorrow night, the select board is meeting and uh, this was a conversation that just came up yesterday with town departments. Given the fact that there's slowly increasing um, case numbers that we might be going back to a mask mandate. Mm -hmm. Like everywhere in town. It's looking like I just like want to it. let the trees be back. I know a lot of places are now doing that. And then um, does, I've had a lot of patrons asking us if the hours that we have now are, are, are going to be our regular hours. Um, and I don't remember why we changed them. I went back through a year's worth of notes and uh, my notes and meeting minutes, and I can't find anything. The only thing I can think of as to why we made them different was because we weren't open and we were doing curbside pickup only, and it didn't make sense to have staff here till eight o'clock at night. I believe, I believe so that it, do we, these, these hours were COVID COVID driven. That and winter driven, I think we bumped that back to 11 to six from one to eight because we of had those. Winter. Yeah. Right. It's and then we did that for one winter and then COVID hit. <clears throat> so is there is there a so do we is there a demand to change the hours cindy i'm not sure if it's a demand so much as our patients just want to know which hours are correct and i can have a conversation with rebecca just to find out from her would she want to work till eight o'clock and let her know that these are what her hours would be on Tuesdays and Wednesdays when she worked. And if so, we would we could start like get it out there now that starting September first, we're going back to one to eight on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and then okay. keep that until winter comes, and then in December do winter hours again. <clears throat> Um, yeah, well, we can cross the winter hours bridge when we come to it. Cynthia, you had a question. Yeah, I was trying to remember if one of the reasons we stopped, we didn't want to go all the way till eight was because the statistics of yeah. record keeping showed. That was another. That there, that there were no patrons between seven and eight. That was another part too, is that of all the statistics I've had, or there may be one or two. So, I mean, 11 to six are working and we are having patrons who come in during that 11 to one o'clock block. And it's the pa our senior patrons who are the, you know, the ones that were at the high, were at the most risk when things first started. So, I mean, I'm flexible no matter what hours we choose. I just wasn't sure what to, like, if we were going to permanently change them or if they were just COVID related. I yeah. kind of feel the statistics, and I recall this as well, there was just like possibly on a given night one to two patrons between that six and eight hours. So I guess unless... You know, yes. more than one or two patrons inquire again that we stay where we are because that does require, um, it satisfies the requirements for evening hours as dictated by MBLC. Right, because the requirement is any time after five o'clock counts as offering evening hours. Mm -hmm. So if we're open five to six on Tuesdays and Wednesday nights, we are meeting that requirement. Cynthia? I wonder if it would be okay. So I, I wonder if it would be helpful if uh, some sort of note was taped. We have that permanent sign with the hours that's the open book. Right. And so I wonder if 
if we're going to stay with the current hours, if we can sort of just for the minute tape something over it, or, you know, if we are going to change to something else, then we notify people and let them know because it is confusing. Like if I go to the library and I haven't been in a while and I'm like, well, why aren't they open till eight? I'm here on a Tuesday. You know, I can see where that would be confusing if you're not a regular library patron or you didn't look it up on the internet. Well, tomorrow we can easily make new numbers to tastefully tape over Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So they'll say 11 to seven. When uh, when it stayed open till eight, what time did it open in the morning? I forgot one, what this. One o'clock. Well, we didn't open in oh, the one. morning. We opened at one o'clock. I, I, I mean, I think that there's something nice about having a, a library open beyond six p.m. Only because all of us trying to get to this meeting at six p.m. Uh, it's sometimes pretty crazy with dinner hour and all that. <laughs> Um, I would like to go back to the hours that it are stated on the um, sign. That's just my personal preference. And the second thing I'd like to say is if those are our hours, then um, we're not going to change our hours because Rebecca's schedule doesn't allow it. Rebecca's schedule has to allow it for our hours, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. I will talk with her tomorrow then to let her know that starting September, should we wait to start September 1st or should we just starting next week, we're back to our regular hours? Well, perhaps we should at least wait until we hear what the select board says tomorrow about um, the, the COVID situation and the board of health is going to chime in of course, as well. Um, maybe we should just keep it the same. And if, uh, in, in my opinion, if um, there is nothing earth shattering that comes from tomorrow's meetings with the Board of Health and the Select Board, then we should go, um, I, well, why wait till September 1st? Go back to the one to eight, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's, it's um, I don't it know. It accommodates everyone, I yeah. agree there. Oh. Yeah. Even though I'm probably in bed by eight o'clock. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I do think we should give her some notice, right? Like I feel like most jobs yeah. require, you know, two weeks notice or something. So September one isn't all that far off if she needs to make some sort of accommodations or things like that, mm. you know? Okay. Can you maybe talk with Rebecca and, and figure it out between the two of you and shoot us an email about when we might be able to start yeah. that. Good. Okay. And no later than September. Okay. 1st. Email. Right. Okay. And then the only other thing is I would like to take next Wednesday the 18th as a vacation day. Can I, will Rebecca be there all day? Yes. Yeah. I, and I will be available by phone or email if any. I didn't know the our policy on vacation Hello, days. Can you I get asked Cindy to um, bring it before us tonight because I didn't know what you've done in the past. So. Okay. Thanks for the heads up, Cindy. Okay. Appreciate it. See, that was. That was okay. Okay, is there anything else in your report that you're going to yes. go? Over? Okay. Um, I didn't know if everyone knew that Amy Schrader got her promotion. She's now our town clerk. That's correct. Amy Schrader? Yes. Oh. Yes, is now cool. town clerk. I did not know that. That's good news. I believe Lynn is continuing as assistant town clerk. For a period okay. of time. Is she working toward yeah. retirement? And treasurer collector. She's treasurer collector still. Yeah. Wow. So I, don't, I don't know. Mm. Okay. okay. How's boot okay. camp, Cindy? <laughs> I'm 
learning an awful lot of stuff. <laughs> I just keep wish going. I had a better connection right now than my iPad. <laughs> All right, that's all I have. Thank you. I'm really okay. sorry that my connection is so bad tonight. Okay, so um, now we're on to old business. I, I'm just checking to see if anyone else is in the waiting room and they are not. So, okay, so um, Jim, you want to give us an update on the ADA project? I'd be, I'd be happy to, Bob. Um, about 10 days ago, I had asked our building inspector, Jim Hawkins, to do a walkthrough um, of the library to be sure that we are going to be in compliance and we're not gonna have any surprises at the end of this lift project. Uh, some of the stuff we've been over before, but I wanted to just revisit it because we've had a delay with COVID and we um, just walked through and we, we began on the ramp um, and as you, some of you may or may not be aware, uh, there has been a, the building commissioner, state building commissioner gave us a waiver on the ramp um, back in 1990 something. It was just after it was built and it's just after ADA was announced. Uh, it did not meet the width requirements, which was at that time um, 48 inches. An interesting point here, the national standard is 36 inches. The only two states in the country that is 48 is California and Massachusetts. Of course. Go <laughs> figure. So at any rate, uh, he is willing to still maintain that he, we, he will honor that temporary waiver um, and not require us to expand the width of that, that structure. The mm. slopes are okay. The radiuses are not up to code, but again, he'll, he'll, um, He'll give us honor that waiver. Um, whether we are going to be putting uh, pipe rails, continuous pipe rails as required by ADA and whether they're on both sides or one side will be up to the architect. Clearly, if they're just on one side, we can, we can save some money. Um, so he will let the architect make that call. Uh, we then went inside and we looked at the staircase going down into the lower level and uh, the left-hand rail is not ADA compliant. It's not round, it's not continuous. However, there is an architectural exemption, historical exemption the architect can grant. Architects in this case have a lot of, lot of power. And Meg, uh, uh, Margo has already indicated that, that she will just get an architectural waiver on that historically. On the right side, there will be a continuous handrail, a two inch round rail going from the top across the landing and down into the, uh, into the foyer. Uh, we then looked at um, the um, room that is currently occupied by the Historical Society and I walked him through that. And he said, we needed a clear path and three feet around the, uh, the electrical panel. And there is three feet in front of it. To the right, there is not. And of course, above it, there's a shelf. And he said, that's not gonna work. He then looked at the oil tank and he said, you know, Jim, this is a utility room. It is not for storage. It is for utility. That means waste baskets and mops and brooms and that, and it has to be accessible at all times uh, through an unlocked door. So that, that's his ruling. It's not anything I made up. And he is going to determine that is a utility room and it was to be used for janitorial purposes as, as we are going to lose two two closets anyway. So yeah, that does make sense. We, we then went up to the, we looked at the handicapped bathrooms and um, I, he's fine with that. Uh, we're, we then went upstairs and we looked at the uh, stack room, which we've been over several times. I told him our plan there was to remove two stacks and replace them with the mobile stack unit. And Cindy has already done some background work on that. She's supplied us with photographs and proximate pricing um, where we can relocate the, uh, the collection. Um, let me ask you, Cindy, are you still aboard here? Cindy? Yes. Oh. Cindy, th um, that room uh, in my tenure- yeah, I'm still here. That room, the reading room, main room has been 
redesigned many times since I've been on the board of trustees. It's going to have to be redesigned again. Do you need any assistance? Okay. In that, Cindy, because you know, perhaps some of our trustees could volunteer to give you a hand in doing some more research on the mobile units, you know, the, the length of them, the height of them, the fit and finish, lead times, pricing, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, if they don't hold all of the fiction books, where can we put them? We know we've got the existing units in the stack room on the east wall. That'll take a lot of books. There's also going to be room to the left of the, uh, of the lift unit where the pub public computers are now for additional stacks. But if you need some help, Cindy, in, in reworking this, um, I would think that you should just ask the trustees to maybe a subcommittee or somebody to assist you in doing this. So um, you don't have to answer right now, but why don't you think about it and let us know and ask Bob okay. if, if you do need some assistance, because it's going to be quite a project. There's, there's, there's a lot to it. Yes. Um, the, the, so the, the, I asked the, the inspector, it's fine. I said, no, Jim, this, we're not going to have any surprises, no last minute changes. And he says, no, you're good to go with what you've told me. And it looks like you will be compliant um, with his office. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing. Um, a week ago, I sent an email to Margo and I'll just read it to you. I said, uh, good morning, Margo. Everyone is asking uh, for a start date for our project. The selectman, the town administrator, the CPC, the trustees, the library director, and the general public, can you help? And I got a response back uh, that afternoon. And I just will read her response. And it says, um, hi, Jim. We are going to be ready to issue bid documents early September. We need to post the project in the central register and publish the ad uh, for bid in the paper twice. So bids would not be due until early October. And given lots of mobilization contract stuff to do, I would imagine I would be beginning the November before construction would start. I'd also hope to be pleasantly surprised if things go faster, but they rarely do. And then she goes on to say it would be a great help if you or your team could provide us with a list of potential contractors who would like to bid on the small project, it's not a favorable bidding uh, climate right now, and even getting uh, competitive bids seems challenging. The more bidders we can interest in the job, the better. The other point is that the builder will need to pay posted wage rates, uh, et cetera. Hope that helps. Um, and uh, that was given how busy we all are, uh, even if our documents hit the streets faster, they are not likely to be able to start until later. It's, it's a good, um, it is good inside job though, so that might help. So that's the timeline on our project. We're looking at the end of the year um, while we can actually start construction. Later than I had hoped, but that's the reality of it. So that is- What does it mean? Go ahead. So the when Margo talks about the bidding, that means that there's not a lot of people out there doing bidding right now. Well, that's been her experience. Um, we just have to wait and see, Cindy. We it's one of those unknowns. You advertise it in the register, and you hope you're going to get several. Bids. Okay. Uh, it's something. It's an unknown. So we just don't know the answer to that question, but. Uh, so we can expect that things will be underway by before the end of the year, hopefully sooner, as she pointed out in her email. So that is the ADA update. Okay. Um, any questions? Well, um, Jim, I know that you've been talking with um, Neil regarding the Gertrude Bardwell room. Um, there has to be some kind of timeline for us to be compliant with the building inspector and to convert that into a full util utility room. Yeah. Um, I don't know what our next step should be. Um, I would expect a timeline certainly before construction begins. Um, so I would say uh, early fall, uh, it should be, the, the room should be vacated by early fall so that we can, um, we can use it. 
And let's not forget, our custodian needs a place to put his stuff. And with those two utility closets going away, he won't have any place to put his stuff. Okay? Okay. So and just one other final thing. I did have, I forgot about this. I did have Aviva, who is the other architect on the job. And she asked to come in to remeasure the stack room so she could update her, her um, document. Uh, and while she was there, I took her downstairs and I pointed out that utility room. Uh, and I said, you know, the plans call for a, a sink, a janitor's sink in the, in the restroom, the handicapped restroom, which I never was in favor of, but that's where the architect put it. And I pointed out to her that in that utility room, it backs up to a similar sink with, with supply lines, waste, and vents right on the other side of that wall. And could we put the sink in that room? And she said, absolutely. Just you'd have to consult with the plumber to make sure the venting is, is going to work. But yes, it would, it's a perfect spot for Matt to, uh, to wash out his mops and so forth. So that will be incorporated in the new architectural revision uh, to follow. And I'll just keep you up to speed on that. Okay. 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 That's it. Any, anything else? Um, any other questions? Okay. So, um, Adelia, I know you're on the historical society. Um, we're, we're facing a deadline now. Um, do you have any, anything that any way, any idea of how we can um, get this accomplished? I was, I'm sitting in because Neil was not able to come tonight or beyond. Um, we are having a meeting this week and has asked for storage at some other spot so that we would be able to move. So I can, I'm only going to report what I've heard. Uh, we have no plan of action okay. at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. But you can see from uh, Jim's report that there, um, we now have a serious deadline and the, the building inspector is not gonna be happy unless we meet that. Okay. Um, the second item of uh, old business is um, a student input on the board of trustees. Cynthia, you, I, you sent that um, email to me yesterday. Um, but it hasn't been widely distributed yet, so. Right, so I'd like to talk about um, what is up with that. And let me find my folder. So basically there's, Bob was really nice and contacted the uh, librarian um, media specialist at Frontier because we're considering this um, position of a teen representative on the board of trustees. And she had some amazing feedback to offer us. However, everything she offered when I read it and reread it and, you know, reread it, it was really towards turning it into a different position. So her suggestion was to not have a teen representative on the board of trustees but instead to have a, perhaps a group. So a teen um, group who would, let me see how it was phrased. Teen advisory board. Teen advisory board. And that would be something that would really come under the library more than the trustees. So it didn't, I really appreciated the feedback and that teens would be more interested in perhaps being part of a group and being able to work together and be able to put in programming and all that other fabulous stuff. That's, that's great. The thing is, that's not what I had initially intended for us. And so before I went and, you know, showed an updated board, uh, updated uh, job description, I really wanted to talk about this because if her feeling was that a teen wouldn't be interested in sitting in on these meetings and that they would not commit to it once a month and that there wouldn't necessarily be actionable things for them to do. And I can appreciate all those things, those ideas. That said, 
if we're going to turn it into a tab, a teen advisory board, then it's really going to come under Cindy and Rebecca. And I think there's different things in the works for that, which Cindy, could you speak to that? Uh, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes, um, the libraries in the Woods Group and I are, well, of which we are a part of, Alice Townsley, who is the assistant librarian at Cushman Library in Bernardston, has taken the lead on creating a sort of county-wide teen youth advisory board, of which we are a part of. And it's going to focus on recruiting young adults to come into the library and to come up with programming ideas of to try to get them interested in wanting to come into the library. Hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. So I guess what I wanted to propose to everyone tonight was, would it be the reason that I had brought the idea of bringing a teen onto our board was to diversify it. In a small town like Waitley, there's only so many ways you can diversify a board. Um, we are well diversified by gender. We are less well gender or diversified by age, but thank you, Megan, for bringing our median age <laughs> well down. Um, and so, but another way to do it is if we were to add a non-voting teen representative. And if I, I, I think Zoe Keenan is probably completely accurate that it, it, we would be hard pressed to find just the right student to come mm -hmm. on and be part of our board. And to, you know, it would really have to be someone who is very interested in, in civics at a very young age. And if this library in Woods is already putting together a teen advisory board that would actually be more countywide, I wonder if it makes sense for us to drop this idea. And that's why I didn't really disseminate any further information because I wanted to have a discussion since mm. when I rewrote the description as I'm writing it, I'm like, well, this isn't really what had been intended. So do people want to drop the idea or and have Cindy pursue it through a community group? in a different iteration, or do we want to try and find that just right person for uh, to be a non-voting representative on the board of trustees? Um, I, I spoke with uh, Zoe right the day after our last meeting and um, Zoe has her finger on the pulse um, of, of students uh, like you wouldn't believe. I mean, I just think she's a fabulous media specialist. Uh, I know her well. Oh, Megan, that's really great. I love it. Um, and um, see, we're, di we're diversifying by age even further. Um, so uh, Zoe just did not think that, that she was going to be able to find a student um, with uh, either who lives in Waitley or has one parent who lives in Waitley that was going to want to commit to coming to a once a month meeting um, and talk about the kinds of things that uh, boards of trustees do. And I have no, no reason to, I mean, I spend a lot of time with kids as well. And I think that she's pretty well um, spot on. I think when kids get to work in groups um, mm -hmm. that they, that they have a tendency to oddly find their voice more quickly than when they're by themselves. And um, so I, I'm a, uh, I'm really in favor of, of uh, what Cindy has said the uh, library in the woods is doing. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not in favor personally of um, a member of the board of trustees at, or, or a non-voting member of the board of trustees at this time. Um, maybe we see how the library in the woods thing works out and um, we see maybe Cindy, you're gonna wanna, um, you know, to have a chat with Zoe and find out um, if this is something that you could could fit into your um, schedule. I would love to collaborate with Zoe. I've been trying to do it for a year now. 
Well, you, um, we just haven't been able to connect. The, the problem with last year is that she was she was taken out of the media center and she was uh, given uh, remote learning. Um, there's a class that you can take at Frontier that you can take various subjects that aren't offered at Frontier online. And she was in charge of, I think, mm -hmm. somewhere in the neighborhood of 120 students doing that. So getting in touch wow. with some, yeah, getting in touch with and she was teaching Spanish, which, by the way, she doesn't speak. Um, because that's just the way COVID, you know, laid low yep. the teaching staff at the regional school. So um, I will I will reach out again yep. to Zoe and I will I will set up a, a confab for the two of you. Um, and I'm sure, of course, um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure because whatever's happening with COVID now is going to have a direct impact on how school opens in a few weeks. Um, so. I'll reach out to her. Oh, I know. I'll, There's I'll already the uh, debates about masks. Yeah. Um, I'll try to arrange a meeting for you then. Okay. Sounds good, Bob. Yeah. Thank you. So okay. I'm I'm willing to rescind. That would be great. Thank if, you. if it's the correct way to do this, I don't know, protocol wise or Robert's rules wise, do I rescind my idea and say we are uh, going to no, We We never, it, there was no, no motion involved in any of this so technically this was this was a, a matter of concern that we were just discussing and we can certainly um put it on the table and discuss it at another yeah. time um and that's fine we don't have to to move to rescind anything because we didn't really fine. take a vote okay and okay. cynthia thank you for your research and the idea and i like that there's a a, a tab out there and that these library these smaller libraries are involved um, um yeah that may be of a great benefit for all of us. Yeah. Would you, would you like to see uh, Zoe's um, uh, Zoe? Did, I don't know. She, she got websites, uh, all kinds of things that, that she offered to me and I forwarded to Cynthia. Maybe Cynthia, you could forward that to the rest of the board. And if you have an interest, yeah. you can, you can check out the sites that she, that she has um, referenced um, in her, her um, email to me. Is that possible, Cynthia, for you? Do you still have that? Yes, I do. Great. Great. So, Perfect. Okay. All, right. Um, All right. I the next the next item of old business is I just wanted to remind you that the uh, the friends still need more members. They are now, I believe, up to five um, who are attending pretty regularly, which is that movement forward. Um, and a long time ago, we kind of all semi agreed with a little arm twisting that we were going to try to get somebody. Everybody I've run into, I was out at the birthday cake um, lighting the other night and I was, everybody I ran into, I said, hey, what are you doing, uh, you know, once a month? How about uh, Friends of the Library? And I actually think I have one more person who might be interested. Um, but if, if there's any way you could recruit someone that you know, um, I know that they would all, they would really appreciate that. Any comments? Um, what yes. I, sorry, what I had wanted to know was if they have made a decision about um, dues and membership, because I felt a little, I have people that I'm willing to ask. I think that people need to know though, what they're signing up for. And if it's something where, because they need people, both members who are going to be writing an annual check and then, so what is the membership dues level? And they need people who are also going to be able to do events and do everything else. You know, I don't think that everyone who's approached is necessarily going to jump right onto the board. And so we we need to know that information. Sheila, is that something you have information on? It was discussed a little at the last uh, friends meeting. Um, a couple of things have happened. One is that they are working on both a, um, like a feature letter that we can put at both the transfer station and the library. Who are the friends? What do they do? You know, how do they support the library? A second letter will go into the scoop. They have a deadline of August 30th. And I believe Ellen and a, another friend who's been showing up pretty regularly are working on that. Um, a lot of 
uh, past information as well as a few websites where you can find all of that great stuff about the Friends. Um, I suggested MBLC and United for Libraries, which is part of ALA. Um, and they did have for that particular um, letter that will go along with the scoop, um, they're looking for something to stand out that doesn't follow old appeal letters that, you know, that may be a little fresher and, and different. And I think they m mentioned, actually, I, Mary Ellen may have that. I think there were four levels of sponsorship, um, individual family, sponsor an event. That way, if people wanted to maybe come on and help out a little, they could help with the tree lighting or perhaps help with the books, you know, something along those lines. Or, you know, I would like my $25 to go toward the summer concert events. So I think Mary Ellen will probably have a little bit more information, but they were pretty much in keeping with, you know, other local libraries. And then I think finally there was a large, it wasn't a family one, um, a business sponsorship. So we're, th they're going to look to possibly approach local businesses, not just Waitley, but, you know, maybe the surrounding um, South Deerfield, Hatfield, et cetera. And um, so there was, there was some good, good forward motion, some good ideas, some very good interest. It, it was, uh, I think it was a pretty productive meeting. Okay. All right. And now on to update on library associates training. Cindy. <laughs> That's me. Yep. <laughs> Very important. This week. Okay. Okay. Technology does not like me this week. One of these days we're going to get to meet in person again, I hope. So Rebecca's training is going well. Next week will be her 90 day review. She is learning all aspects of library work. I have heard from two outside people that she's very happy and very excited to be here. Okay, and the same sort of training that you um, gave before is being done now so that in your hopefully not, but in an absence on your part, she would be able to handle billing, getting the mail, all of those things that we were. She's, she's learning all aspects of the library. Good, okay. Cynthia? No, I just wondered if that had to wait until she got through her probation think, period. Like if she has a probationary period, wouldn't it be that her job is the first part of the training? And then once that's finished, which it sounds like is imminent, then she would move on to that other training. Is that um, She's been learning a little bit here and there. Okay. She's, she's that's probably in other duties being, as assigned, um, right? <laughs> educate. She's learning all aspects of the job. Okay. So at that's pretty days, much where it falls under. Yeah, at 90 days, were you to unexpectedly have, say, two days off or you were, you know, unwell or something, she would be able to come yeah, in. Yeah, uh, but up. you're telling me. Hmm? Yeah, she would be able to do all of that. Okay. Okay, very yeah. good. All right, um, the Bardwell room, a status we've already discussed. Everybody... My technology is not liking me today. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the status of your uh, Comcast rerouting and the purchase of the Wi-Fi signal enhancers. The, the Comcast rerouting is complete. The enhancers are in Cindy's hands right now. And it, perhaps she could comment on, on that right now. Ink and toners. Solutions is coming tomorrow to hook them up for us. 
Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay. Very good. Um, any update on the sign kiosk? It's okay. beautiful. I was going to say, I saw it going in it's when I went beautiful. for a walk. <laughs> have, have you been have, has everyone gotten a chance to see it? No, I have not. I've been working for Sanderson, so I've been this really busy every day. A few it is. It um, really is. I stopped. Well, uh, it's, yesterday. Sean has installed it. It's amazing. Wonderful. It's just it's, he has a few more tweaks to it, and then it'll be ready to use. Okay. I have a suggestion, though. the The sign has. I, I swear, I think he's got twenty five beautiful glossy coats of paint but uh it is a work of art it, it really is the bottom of the post um jimmy you know where the four by fours fit into the metal bracket there we really ought to go down there with some maybe bins or kills and i'm gonna look and see if i've got a quarter gallon in the basement and maybe finish up the bottom on that does that make sense it sure does yep. yeah yeah it yeah, stop and take a look. It's beautiful. Okay, wonderful. All right, and uh, Jim, how's our tree doing? Oh, it's doing great. They came and they they pruned it. And they they gave us a, a good good report. It really looks super. Thank, Thank you. you. And okay. we've had, certainly had enough rain to keep it keep it wet. So yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Cindy has. I spoke. I I hunted for Andrea, and I found her twice. And she promised me both times. Did she finally get up there? She did. I'm just waiting on her bell. Okay, perfect. Wonderful. That, that also looks very good. I noticed that. Yeah. 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 Yes. What what happened? What happened was between my first contact with her and my second contact was we had uh, 13 days of rain and she does lots of lawn mowing. So she was behind the eight ball. As soon as there was a sunny day, she had, you know, lawns with grass this tall to mow. So that's how, and she, she said, I promise, I promise, I promise I'll be there by the end of the week. So um, I, I didn't, I didn't let her off the hook. I kept, um, anytime I saw her truck, I just swerved over and pulled into whosever yard it was. <laughs> Andrea, we got to talk. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Um, you're welcome. <laughs> Um, and we don't need to, to talk anymore about preparation for construction work because that looks like it's a little ways off and we do have the ball rolling. Um, and Adelia says that, that they're um, looking for alternate space, which is, that's one thing. Cindy, you don't have to worry about things for a while. Looks like you're gonna have a calm August, calm September, and maybe it'll get revved up a little bit in October. Um, but we'll know as soon as um, uh, we have bid documents out okay. and we'll see if there's any bidders. Okay. Um, do you want to do an update on programming? Cindy? I'll just increase my meditation. Good. So um, we have our first in-person programming this Saturday. Weather permitting is going to be outside. And then we have our second in-person programming next Saturday. Weather permitting, it will be outside. If not, we have rain dates scheduled. Um, because okay. right now they they'll be outside. Hopefully, I'm not sure mask mandate wise yet whether it's going to be if even if you're outside. Well, I'll know more after tomorrow's Slackman's meeting, and then we have programs scheduled up until October. As everyone saw, um, I put on the director's Ooh. report the programs that we have scheduled up until October. Okay. So. Sounds great. Okay. Any questions? No, That's okay. Good. All right, is there any other old business that you want to just? Okay, I'm a little concerned about the 250th because they, they, they wanted our input on something and I'm just, I'm sorry they're not here, for, but I'm sure I'll find out about that. Okay, under new business, I wanted Jim to talk a little bit. Um, we discovered the problem that that created the flood in the basement. So um, Jim has some ideas um, about that. 
Well, Keith sent me a lengthy email. I won't read the whole thing, but basically what he told me was that the source of the problem were the fines getting through the screen mesh and plugging up the downspout over time. And it did take over time to have all this happen. What got in the downspout? The downspout's what? in the back of the of the building. What got in? Fine, fine particulate, um, and then it decomposed, and literally the pipe was filled with, um, I guess you'd call it humus. Yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, it was it was um, organic matter, which would have been perfectly suitable for your garden, but not for the roof drain. Oh. Well, Keith has recommended that he come in um, once a year and take the downspouts off and make sure that they're clear. Um, this has never happened. I've never seen this happen before. So it did accumulate no. over time. So that should be added to a regular maintenance. And he's offered to come over with his bucket truck and his crew to do that uh, every fall. He also pointed out that the pillars uh, in the front of the library need some attention at the top. They need mm -hmm. some urethane caulk. And he's also willing to do that as well uh, with wow. his bucket truck. So I saw Keith today and I told my respondent writing that that we would welcome his help on the pillars and also the re regular maintenance on the, um, on the downspouts. Um, and in keeping with that subject, Bob, I'd just like to continue on with the, with the carpet issue. Uh, that has been removed. Uh, allied flooring and carpeting um, have, have come in and they've removed the carpet. They sprayed a, uh, something for mildew and mold uh, so it, the room should be quite dry by now. The um, representative from Allied recommended that we go back in. We do not use carpet as a replacement, but we put in plank flooring. It's a very common flooring today. They use it in hospitals and commercial establishments. Uh, it, is, it is waterproof. So if we ever had this problem again, we could just vacuum it up and not have to worry about, uh, uh, you know, taking a, a carpet up. up. So it's, that's what I'm working on now. I've got quotes from her and I've given those to Amy. She's going to measure those up with the um, insurance adjustment, insurance people. We have a thousand dollar deductible. Um, and I pointed out that this really is a town building and the town should be responsible for covering the cost on that. And she was to pass that on to Brian. So uh, she's got all of the paperwork. The last item she wanted was, could we quote what it would cost to put a carpet in? And I got that today too. And it's really not much less than what it is for plank flooring. So um, the, uh, the other thing is that I would hope to delay this until yeah. uh, construction began, but I don't think it's fair to put that room out of service for four or five months. It's just, it's just not fair to Cindy with the programs and we need to get that room back in service. So um, I think this is something that we should address right away. Let's get the plank flooring down um, and work it out with the insurance company. So I'll have more to add as soon as Amy um, Schrader lets me know where we stand on this. But I've told her the town should be paying for this. Thank um, you, Jim, for all of that effort. Just a quick question on the plank flooring. There is some kind of a sub, like a, I don't know if I'd want to call it a pad, but something that gets laid down before that goes across. Actually, oh. uh, Sheila, what they're going to do is glue it down. They are. Yes. Yeah, so that'll, okay. that'll completely seal that area. So yeah. that again, if we have any further floods, it, they can just vacuum it up and it will not get underneath. And we can just like, Swiffer right across that yeah. if needed, or lay a tarp down even for some of the kid programs. Yeah, I mean it's it's really it's just like you can clean it. It's not going to get stained. Um, they're okay. going to provide us with a with a uh, a rubber um, a half inch cove that will make the arc at the bottom as a yep. from the baseboard to the floor, so it'll cover that up. So it should look nice. It's the only thing is what color do we want? And I just asked the trustees to let Bob and I pick it out, if you're all agreeing, agreeing on that. Okay. Cynthia? Um, so we're going to put down a wood floor before we have all this construction. That's the recommendation? Yes. And how is that going to be protected? I mean, like, 
I just, you know, it's going to be such a big to do. I was concerned about the carpet when we had the looming upcoming construction. And so, and wood is also feels like it could get damaged sort of right off the bat. What we'll do, what we'll do, Cynthia, is we'll put a tarp down and put plywood over it so they can walk on that. So that shouldn't be damaged. In a perfect world, we would prefer it not be down. But again, we can't take that room out of service for four months. So a tarp and plywood certainly will do the job. Well, the contractors should have some kind of oh yeah protection anyway. Commercial construction. And there was no issue with, well, I remember there was a mention of wall paint bubbling. That's yeah. not, we don't have to redo that. Well, we'll see how that looks once everything's done. We can paint the walls at any time, but right now it's not on our agenda. Right. But the insurance adjuster did say that we can do the walls. Or yeah. The floor. We'll we get the money for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the town's the town has the thousand dollar deductible. It's not just the, the library; it's the right. town's yeah. deductible for its buildings is a thousand dollars. Are those plaster? Yeah. That's plaster downstairs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I'm sorry, what is that? What did you say? It's plaster down there. Yeah, it's it's um, it's plaster over lath over brick. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that that is repairable. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, uh, we have already talked about, um, Cindy uh, is uh, gonna think about um, the mobile shelving thing and, and involving some members of the board, maybe a subcommittee or something like that, but you want some time to think about that. Yes, Cindy? You're on. Yes and I can get back to you tomorrow. Okay. okay. And okay. there's also, is the, that service, okay. like the reconstruction renovation service, their MBLCs, like design person, is that free to our library or is there a fee for that? that that's a good question, Sheila. I had asked the young lady who came in and uh, offered the solution to yeah. the, uh, to this relocating the collection. They do not provide design services. They will give you an opinion. Yeah. They're not architects. So Right. I didn't expect that, but I just wondered, you know, okay, so it would be nice to have somebody that does this, I guess, you know, for a living, if we could maybe get their take on what design might work well for our beautiful rotunda. All right. So okay. there, I went, so I went... Sorry. Lori Wheeler, who is the director of the uh -oh. we can't hear you. Cynthia. We can't hear you, Cindy. Uh, is everybody frozen or is it just me? It, it was, was just, just you. <laughs> now you're good. I was going to say, it often will, I if you don't have great really bandwidth. really sorry, you everybody. Okay, if you shut off your video, it usually helps with your speaking. Um, yeah. So sometimes that'll make it easier. All right. I'm just so sorry, everybody, that I'm having troubles tonight. That's all right. You're fine um, on audio, even when we don't have your video. That I think that's what Megan was saying. We can hear you. Okay. Much better. All right. Um, well, what I was going to say was Lori Wheeler of Arms Library, they just did their major renovations. So I can reach out to her and find out if there's anybody she used um, to help her figure out her design plan. Yeah, wouldn't hurt. So wouldn't there's, hurt. there's two women, um, Lauren Stara and Andrea Bunker. Um, Lauren's an architect and a librarian. Andrea is a library building specialist, and they created something called the New Guide for Space Planning um, at libraries. And I can look, see if I can look up in my notes. I am not in Massachusetts right now, so I can see when I get back if I can look up in my notes and find anything else about that. But that is what they specialize in. 
is, you know, how things get laid out in a library. Yeah. So that could be a potentially another resource. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, and then um, we have nothing new from the Board of Health or the Select Board until after tomorrow. Um, so that completes uh, new business. Is there any other new business? Okay, then I think we should, should have a motion to adjourn. Um, can I just ask? Oh, sure. Uh, Cindy, after you get the, um, the results or find out what went on with the uh, select board meeting tomorrow, if, would you mind just shooting an email? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I, I okay. know this, Bob, I know this is off topic, but to you, Sheila, my condolences on the passing of your brother last week. Thank you. I appreciate I'm that. I'm sorry, Sheila. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah, sorry to hear that. Yeah, is what it is. Hmm. And you got you got my text, Sheila. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have a uh, service this week down at the vet cemetery in Agawam, so that'll be Thursday, and uh, and we'll get through it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.